Get ready for Real Talk with Pastor B in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, Real Talk with Pastor B. Um, we're doing another podcast. We have uh, some of the same people here with us today for another round. We have D'Amico. D'Amico, say what up. How are the people doing today? All the people what's going on. It's Coach D'Amico. Be good to be great, baby. I'm hitting up making love extraordinary. All right, <laughs> Shanika. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Real Talk with Pastor B. And Pastor B is here. So remember, Real Talk with Pastor B is brought to you by Ordinary People Media Group. OPMG specializes in delivering original content for the masses. Visit OrdinaryPeople.com for all things ordinary. Today, can I, can I just say real quick that Shanika is here right <laughs> that Look, if you're on Facebook, you Facebook friends with her, be careful what you say because she will write down your comments in the tablet and keep your oh, notes with her forever. Yeah. Professional, oh, yeah. Official note taker. She is. Um, today's podcast we're going to talk about is... And this is going to probably be, I don't want to say it's like a series, but um, it's the blueprint of the black woman. Mm. Single black woman. Single black woman over the age of 30. Hmm. So we posed the question. We put it on social media. We also emailed it to some people that we knew. And we got some very colorful responses. Um, But there seems to be some consistencies in why people believe or stereotypes people believe society has about the single black women or woman over the age of 30. Most of them are negative. Aren't all of them negative? A couple of them, well, the Uh, one that... um, <laughs> she all all no, they all no, 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 uh, I think it was like 4%, maybe 5% of all of the responses that we got, that was the positive. So the other 95, uh, 96.3% were negative. It's oh, not funny. Guys, 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 guys. It's not funny. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off with one and then we're going to take it around. Um, right. So the question was, Shanika, tell us what the question was. If you have it. You're not ready? Okay, so I'm so I'm gonna say what the question was. So the question was, what are some of the common misconceptions society has about single black women over the age of thirty? The one that stuck out to me the most, and that is rubbing me to death, is they hate men. So I didn't give too many um, identifiers of this single black woman over the age of 30. I never said that she was educated or uneducated. I never said that she was successfully professional or not. I never said that she had kids. Um, I never gave her sexual orientation, right? Mm -hmm. And now that was said that she hates men, but other people alluded to the same answer. So there were several comments about her um, being bitter, um, had a bad relationship, jilted, damaged. Mm-hmm. She hates men. Too picky, too independent. That would rub me the wrong way. Too picky, too independent. Yes. Demiko, which was one that stood out to you? I hate to be the pessimistic one. Uh, the one that stood out to me was it's difficult to date them. And it stood out to me because it came from a man who's in that age range. Difficult to date them. Mm-hmm. So, again, without any additional identifiers mm-hmm. of this avatar of this woman, it was because she was difficult or she could be difficult to date. Mm-hmm. So... Elaborate on that. What you think from a male's perspective? Why did that person respond that way? Or if it's true? Right. So, 
use typically the men type of men who, who respond that way are usually men who are going through difficulties dating women in that age range in their thirties. So uh, because if you're going to talk to a happily married man, he's going to respond differently about. Uh, the wife that he's with, or he's going to respond differently about the women that he's dated in his 30s. Um, because mm-hmm. it, it all depends, it still all depends upon the state that you're in and um, what value you saw while dealing with those women. So I think overall, I mean, the media doesn't help. I think uh, the news doesn't help. And, and, and unfortunately, so many have poor, they exaggerate the poor experiences they have with oftentimes black women who are in that, that age range, all those things poured into their, their pot of perception, excuse their perception of black women, of black women who are 30 and single. Um, especially living here in the Bible Belt of the South where they expect a woman to be married and win and have kids by a certain time frame, mm-hmm. just as men are expected to have their financial situations together by a certain time frame. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It just again all points back to we all need to check our expectations. Mm-hmm. We all need to rethink them and we need to stop imposing them onto each other mm-hmm. because we create the constraints that create the conditions that we live in. Correct. So, can I point out something funny? Yeah, Domingo's got he fucking got all. Posture change to the chin. Uh, <laughs> he got, he's uh, in coach in the mode now. Exactly. I'm like, what the hell? Who, y- who y'all want? What y'all want? <laughs> <laughs> you know Ask me a serious. I just take I this matter. I take this. Question. I take this matter extremely serious. Not because I, you know, I coach a lot of black women who are single. Um, it's just I know that it doesn't help. The, the negative connotations attached to it doesn't help the progression of our community. You know what I'm saying? So. That's why I, I take it extremely serious. And I know all of it isn't true. Some of it has validity. Mm-hmm. But to overall, like, if you were to ask me personally what I think of a black woman who's 30 and single, I'm thinking that she's likely an independent woman. And I don't mean independent in a negative way. I mean independent in an empowering fashion. Mm-hmm. Meaning she's, she's probably at a point in life where she's taking charge of her life. She's, in a, uh, she's at a management level in her life or owns a business mm-hmm. that's starting to peak out and boom. She's, she's likely very sexy, very attractive because that body is starting to you know, though starting to fill in, you know, because when you're young, you know what I'm saying, you're still kind of skimpy in areas or whatever. But when you start getting 30, I always say women prime out and they about between 35 to 42. They physically prime out that way. You know, but I, you know, I just look at a 30, I, 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 get, I get excited about a single black 30 year old woman because she's at a different phase in her life mm-hmm. where she feels she has the world in front of her and she's attacking that world in front of her. And she's living by her own means. And you think that the um, at that age, if she's single, mm-hmm. more than likely it could be by choice. Oh, absolutely. I think I think that uh, I think that that's a great question uh, because I if you want something and you don't have something, then that doesn't necessarily. That is by choice because that's mean you, that means mm-hmm. you're not making the adjustments that you need to make to get what you want. Or could it be that she's choosing to, to be happy? Because you, because it anybody, well, for the most part, it's easy to get into a relationship. That don't mean that doesn't mean it's a good relationship. That's true. That's a fact. So if if you are 30 years old and you make the decision to the decision to stay single, yeah, then you're doing it by choice because you don't want to deal. With maybe things that you don't want to do. Hold on, with. Then, then you got to check yourself because you, then you're asking yourself, well, why are you viewing relationships as something difficult or a hassle instead of something that's joyous, something that's going to bring out the best in you, something that's going to well, make you a better no, no. person? I think when I say choosing to stay single, not because you're not actively looking. Yep. It's choosing to stay single because you don't want to tolerate certain things from people. For example, mm-hmm. so I could probably walk out. I'm using me as an example. Go ahead. If I wanted to, I can probably walk out this door mm-hmm. and find anybody mm-hmm. to have a relationship, right? Mm-hmm. Does that mean that I want to tolerate some of the not so attractive things that may come with that person? Mm-hmm. So the choice could be to stay single 
until you find someone, and I'm gonna use this term, that you're equally yoked. Oh my God. I don't like oh, that term. Jesus. I know you don't, that's why I said it. Jesus. <laughs> that's why I said it. First off, again, that goes back because here's Can the I thing. just get, can we get no. a choice? Stay with my choice. Because you're going to go, you're going to put your, your coat cap on. <laughs> and then you're going to be like, well, because we need I to can't... make a decision. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because I, I gotta tell you the truth. Because you, I can't, I can't allow you to sit here and say I'm single by choice. If you don't want to, if you would, if you could get the most, only reason I would accept that is if you had the option in front of you to have the most fulfilling, most promising, encouraging relationship or opportunity in front of you, and you say, you know what, I'm gonna hold down. Yeah. But if you're holding off because you don't want to deal with the drama, the chaos, or the, the extra trouble you have to go to deal with somebody. That's not telling me you're single by choice. That tells me that you're single because you don't want the hassle. You don't want the work. You don't want the evolving that's going to require That's still a choice. That's That's still a choice. That's 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 avoiding. That's avoiding what you want. Because there are some people who are making the choice to deal with those types of relationships. That's true. That's they're making just because you're making a poor choice. That's what you just said. You just said it. Because you just said there's people who are in relationships that don't enjoy the relationship they're in. They're, no! That's what, you, that's what Sneaka just said. She just said. <laughs> that's not what I said. <laughs> what did you just, I'm sorry. What did you I say? said there are people who are making the choice yeah. to tolerate uh-huh. essentially those bad characteristics. Right. Or, or what Passion may see as bad, right. I may not see as a bad characteristic. Right. Right. So if Pastor said, you know what, I'm not dealing with him because he has this, this, and that going on, I can't deal. And I said, you know what, I think I can deal with it. We have each made a choice. I may deal with it because you know what, I just need somebody around. Okay. I, I, you know. I, I, yeah, I can't co-sign that because that's not that's that you're the only thing you're choosing to do is choosing. You're choosing one. You're choosing to perceive. A relationship to be a certain way because a, you just said you're in a you're in a negative relationship. She's single, right? Mm-hmm. She doesn't want to be in a relationship that you have. No, 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 no. That's not so, what you just. So let so let me let me let me bring it around. Okay. Okay. Let's let's talk since we're the three of us are here. Let's say the three of us. Yeah. D'Amico has three kids. D'Amico is bipolar. D'Amico is. Temperamental, yes, he and he Little and he is uh, challenged yes. in certain areas. Hey. And Pasha says, "You know what? Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. That's too much going on. I don't want to deal with that." Right. And I say, "You know what? D'Amico's still kind of cool. Right. I, 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 I'm gonna get down with D'Amico." Right. Pasha has made a choice. I have made a choice. But Pat, Pasha, <laughs> if I was a Six fold motherfucker with a six foot four dick <laughs> with no kids, cool as a motherfucking fan, mm-hmm. and financially sustainable. Mm-hmm. Would I then, would you then, and you want to be with somebody, would you then seek out something with you? Absolutely. Thank you. And she may Miko, make the choice point. to do so, and I may, point say, made. no, 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 and I may say, you know what? The Mikos is arrogant. That's true. So, so despite all of that, I can't deal with his arrogant attitude. Boom. So I have made a choice Wrong. not to deal. What you the fuck are you doing? You're not, you're not independently making. <laughs> here's, here's where your, here's where your choice. Here's where it matters. Where it's, when you're making a choice purely because you want to be single. You're making the when you're making a choice when you have good options and opportunities. Oh, shit. <laughs> but if you if you have poor options around you and you saying I don't want to deal with those poor options, so hold off. That's you're not a making choice. that's that's a choice. No, but you, but you're making you're making a choice. You're not making a choice independently. It's because of circumstance. That, yeah, because you don't want what's available. It's truly a choice. Like you say, like you, they, they all, the notion is, you can really determine how faithful a man is if you put a woman in front of him when he's in a relationship that he actually wants to hook up with and he doesn't hook up with that woman. That's, actually, that's a testament of his faithfulness to a woman versus you put an ugly chick in front of him who he doesn't want to hook up with. Of course he's not going to want to hook up with the ugly chick. 
But put a real good look, put a fine chick in front of him, you're gonna really see where his faithfulness is at, right? So if I put a great relationship, a great mate I in like front of you. Chris Rock, you get <laughs> it. Okay. All right, so that's your options. Options. So you can't, your options, your options, if you have great, your, I only believe a woman or a man is happily single when they have great options in front of them and they choose not to take on those options. Not because we were, he's a great guy now, we just don't match. You know, so we better off as no. I'm talking about like y'all will be a great phenomenal couple, mm-hmm. and y'all probably eventually will be a phenomenal couple. But you're saying right now, I just want to be by myself here, not because there's bad men, not because there's men with a lot of drama, not because you got to deal with a house and check in with somebody, not because of any of those factors that have to deal with that person. Mm-hmm. I'm single because I just want to be single. That is a choice. I hear you. <laughs> It's, so it's received, however. Yeah, exactly. And we can just leave it at that. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> so you're telling me that you're telling me the same, the, the choice of being independent when you, like, not being with anyone, being mm-hmm. single, is when you have good options in front of you, it's the same choice that you're making them being single when you don't have good options in front of you. I think a choice is a choice. It's, so you use the word good choice. I'm not going to say good or bad. I'm going to say a choice is a choice. So when you are making a decision-making process and coming up with a result where you're deciding, mm-hmm. making a choice, yeah. that is a choice. Yeah. Whether you choose to be in a regular-ass relationship or you choose to be in a um, relationship with no one, that is a choice. A choice is if you see fine-ass Idris Elba, okay? Mm-hmm. And you decide, hmm, I'm still not going to get involved with that. A choice is a choice. Is a choice. Yeah. And all choices come with positives and negatives. Mm-hmm. So you can't just say um, a choice is based solely on um, positive. Positive. Yeah, like, if your circumstance, if your you got because you got to ask yourself: Is that person really avoiding something, mm-hmm. or are they making a choice to solely be something? That's what you got to ask yourself. Because of what you're saying in these circumstances, if it's circumstantial, you're often avoiding what it is you don't want to deal with. Okay, but so. if it's a choice, it's a pure choice. It's a it's a con- you're making a conscious choice, and it's because the choice is because you want to be single. Because that's the question that was asked. Mm-hmm. What if she is she is she? Uh, do I believe a woman who wants to be single? Who is single? If she wants to be single, and it's not because of any circumstances, I believe her. But if she wants to be single, and it's also and it's because of circumstances There's around her, always I can't believe she wants to be single. There's always because, a circumstance. Because if the great guy was in front of her, she wouldn't be single no more. So therefore, it's not you're not single because by choice you're single because of your circumstances. Now your circumstances change, your relationship status gonna change. Let him have that. Okay. Let him have that. 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 And the same, the same again goes for a man. If a man had a great woman in front of him, and he want, and he didn't want to be bothered at all by any woman, regardless of any woman around him, then I believe that he wants to be single. But if he said, "I'm not, I'm only, I'm single by choice because I don't want to tolerate the nonsense around me," that doesn't tell me. That means that you're avoiding what it's going to take for you to find someone great versus you solely being single by choice. Because most of the time, most but it cases is by choice, right? Because uh, yes. you're against the world, Tyson. And right. In a general sum, <laughs> it's choice. But if you look underneath that hood, mm-hmm. that choice is circumstantial. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes. Mm-hmm. Most cases, it's not circumstantial. Uh, uh, most cases, it's circumstantial. And, and so, like I uh, told So, you, are you saying that black women over the age of 30... Black women over the age of 30 who, who if, are single? No, I'm not even going to oh. say... I'm, yeah, they are single. Okay. Uh, but you're saying black women o- over the age of 30, if if, if the stars were in alignment, yeah. they would choose mm-hmm. to not be single. If black women over 30 were single, you better or- you better be mindful of who you got in this room. I'm that- <laughs> <laughs> listen, this, this listen, fellas, this is when you use your left. All right, listen. 
if black women single she's 30 and she got great options in front of her and she chooses to be single then I believe her but if she got great options in front of her and she chooses uh, the great option then that tells me this entire time it, she wasn't single by choice of her wanting to be single she was single by choice of trying to avoid her circumstances that were around her and that leads to the point of are we really dating or are we bullshitting because oftentimes, in cases I find out, mm-hmm. we all are bullshitting when it comes to pursuing our daily lives. Because had you asked somebody who needed a job or you got you need some income coming in, you need to find some money to pay these What's bills. Wrong? What you jumping up at me for? Hold on. You're gonna find you gonna, you gonna find some excuse me, that's the alpha in me. You gotta you gotta hey, you know what I'm I know you're not used to that <laughs> friend zone, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> But when you when you you looking for a job and income, you're gonna you're gonna go interview at 30 different jobs, and you're gonna find a job that's best for you. And if that job that's best for you is 30 miles away, guess who's gonna be going 30 miles to and from forward from work today? Mm-hmm. I ask. All right. But if it come to dating, oh man, God gets so tired of dating these these men. They ain't want to do this. That you complain about all the ancient men that you go on these dates with, or ancient women that you go on these dates with, and. And, but you you don't put in the same amount of effort, understanding that you do with, in your dating life that you would with a job. Because you ain't going to complain about the ain't shit interview. You're going to keep interviewing, interviewing, interviewing until you get the job that you want. But we're not going to keep dating and dating and dating until we get the person we want. We're going to get fatigued. Why? Because we, it's not a necessity to us to have that companionship in our lives as it is a necessity to us to have that job in our lives. So, therefore, we attack them differently. Nice analogy. Nice. Ooh, what a goddamn tambourine! Yeah. What a goddamn tambourine! Yeah. Yeah. So, so, this is all free of charge, by the way. Give me that. You want to give me that one? I, you got to. Far as the analogy that he used. You got to. As you, far as when you're pursuing a job versus when you're pursuing a relationship, I'll you. give you that. Thank okay. You. Everything prior. Oh, okay. That's, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, that's fine. Shanika, what was one of the um, questions, or excuse me, answers that stuck out to you? Again, the one about too independent. Okay. Um, I got into a, I know, I know. I, I, I got into a little uh, heated debate with uh, actually a family member of mine about the too independent part. Because my question is, if I'm single, you're single, at what point is, where's the line where I'm just taking care of business versus me being too Independent. How does that look? Being too independent. I think Bills that, have to get paid. Yeah. I have to eat. Gas have to be put in the car. Like so. I think that too what's, what's independent. The measure? I think the too independent affects the men who are not at the same level of the that woman. Mm, fellas, look. look so, so I know me, a lot of fellas just tighten up here and there. And right so now. let me add. Because he he did mention something to that effect. However, I think men also place too. Mm. Spit it out, saucer. I was gonna say place too much value, mm-hmm. but I may have to retract mm-hmm. that on being the provider. And when I say to on the level, I'm glad you brought that up. I wasn't even necessarily talking about on the financial. Well, well, I do think guys think like that. And help me out. Jump in, Domingo. I think guys want to be able to bring something to the table. Absolutely. So when they come in and they see, oh, well, she already has a house. She has a fairly good job. She has a car. She has this. What does she need me for? When you mentioned um, earlier about companionship. What's mm-hmm. wrong with companionship? Furthermore, what's wrong with bringing more to the table? So if I got my pot and you know, going over here, why can't you add to the pot? Or I add to your pot to, to build upon that. Build more stability, build more wealth, become, uh, you know, that power team, mm-hmm. become that Michelle mm-hmm. and Barack mm-hmm. or whatever. Why can't we build Ooh, upon that? Why did you think, say, girl, you I mean, think, the right no, I'm just saying, I, I think all too often men discount themselves and say, Absolutely. she got it. Absolutely. What she need me for. Mm-hmm. And, and then they use that term, you're too independent, Almost as if it's a curse word, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. I, I don't get it. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where they're lacking, not necessarily where we're lacking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can you go? You hit on so many points. Here, here's what I want to say for starters, fellas. Don't internalize their words as an impede on who you are. Mm-hmm. Internalize their words as them trying to understand the disconnect that we have. Mm-hmm. All right. So let your defenses down. Um, 
I, I, for sure, when a woman, when a man uses words as you're too independent, or you have everything going on, I have nothing to have. Because I have, I have been my friends who, they would say that they wouldn't even invite guys to their house because those guys, you just get intimidated. And they're mm-hmm. like, damn, mm-hmm. I can't do nothing for mm-hmm. you. So what am I here for? And that points to a lack of, uh, uh, that, that points to a direct lack of feeling of validation of yourself, a lack of significance you feel of yourself as a man to be able to contribute to a woman's Hot life. Mm-hmm. You know, teach, where, teach. Here, and this is why I say it's so important. Teach, this, is, teach. this is why I'm saying I say it's so important. See, women love when I get them. <laughs> when I flip them up, like, oh, I, got it. Minutes ago, <laughs> I got the first part. But uh, this is why I say it's so important for women to, uh, mothers and, and fathers, to educate their children on how to conduct quality relationships when they're children and when they're young. Um, so issues like this later on down the road don't become so damn bad mm-hmm. uh, because you know all this a man he can contribute more to a woman's life than just finance mm-hmm. but see he's mm-hmm. not taught that he's mm-hmm. taught that to be the financial object yep. in her life mm-hmm. and so when he sees that I can't fulfill that role then fuck mm-hmm. I'm lost mm-hmm. I don't know what I he doesn't know that he can provide a sense of security in her life mm-hmm. in a way of help of helping her you know feel that she has significance in this world more than just paying bills, that she she has excellent tools and abilities and gifts to mm-hmm. do podcasts, to do businesses, to do be a manager, to whatever she has pursuits in life, mm-hmm. you're her encourager. You know, you're helping, you're, you're her aid. There's all types of roles, like provider. Men get stuck in, uh, traditional women too get stuck in the world. A man is supposed to be a provider of the, finance, of the household. They equate that to finance. Providing is providing love, mm-hmm. providing comfort, mm-hmm. providing sanity, providing counseling. Sanity. There's so many factors of providing that you can provide. Again, if you don't have the education to know that type of stuff, you won't know. You're going to operate on hearsay. All right? So I get you. Yeah, men, we don't. We, when men reiterate that, what we're really saying is, damn, I don't know how I'm going to fit into your life. Mm-hmm. I don't know what value I can mm-hmm. bring out of myself mm-hmm. to help increase the value in your life. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when men typically say that, well, a best response women can, can say that could be make a man feel empowered. Hold on, I'm writing that. Hold on. <laughs> okay, the best the best way to respond with that is I need you in more than one way than you think that I need you in. And here are the different ways I would need a man like you in my life for. That way a man he doesn't take it as oh shit, he, he what happened their response would be like, you know what? I can do that. I can definitely do that. It, release, it relinquishes the tension that he's feeling right now due to the financial burden that he sees directly in front of him that he can't keep up with. Okay. You know, so, and that takes a lot of work on a woman as well to be able to discover in herself what can a man add to her life beyond what he's directly putting on the table aside from bacon and food. But, but doesn't that also need to coincide with the men need to know their worth? Yes. Because... They have to do a lot. Yes, I agree. So do Men you and your them. your counterparts, yeah. your, your your brothers, yeah. whether they be uh, biological or not, your peoples? Yeah. Do they do men build themselves their village among themselves? Do they build them up to tell them? Um, <laughs> I'm like, do you empower your? Do, do you empower your exactly? You all do you empower your homeboys? <laughs> Men, we have these conversations. I, I tell you this. Most of the time, men are pretty uh, upfront with each other. Like they are. Yeah, we, we tell each other the truth. Like if we've been a dog towards a woman who's usually being good towards us, we we'll usually say, "You know what, dog? You tripping on that? One. You tripping on that one?" Um, you know, we hold each other accountable for the most part, unless now, unless that they, was a statement. Yeah. Do you empower one? And that wasn't a. Yeah, and, we do. We do empower each other. Like we. Enough, no, dog. Man. Saying you dog, you tripping. That that. Right, dog, you tripping. That's a statement. Okay. Because I what, and I'm I'm not a man, so right. what I yeah, dog, you tripping on that one. Okay. And nothing else gets said. Do we? Why y'all pissing in the bushes together, man? You tripping on that one? And yeah, that's all. Like, yeah, like if he. That's not empowering. So you said empowering? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I follow you. No. You're good enough. We don't. No, nah, we don't. You don't hear that. You have all these great qualities. Nah, man. You, Any you woman would be happy to be if, with you. If you hear that, that is rare. 
That that comes up maybe once in the blue moon. Is it needed? Hell yeah. Men need so much love, coddling, and care. That's why men are shit on every woman in their life aside from their mom. Mm-hmm. Because that's been the only person to ever empower them. To, and not and it's not because of anything that they gave. It's just because they fucking exist. Mm. Mm. So, so, so men, we need that shit. Like, we, we need it. And men need to also be, we have to be willing to ask for it at the same time and encourage it from other men and from women. But do they even recognize it? No, they fucking don't. Because they live in a society that tells them that, look, a man is alpha strong. A man is, he don't tap into your feelings. Love will get you hurt. All right? You hear that term oftentimes? That that signifies to a man, especially an impressionable man. Because a lot of a lot of men, they build in their mind what a man's supposed to be by their teenage years. So by like 16, 17, 18, they pretty much develop, okay, this is what a man is supposed to be, so this is how a man I'm gonna become. Mm. You know, so it doesn't get at what point do they transition out of it? When they get a shit ton of heartbreak. <laughs> When they get to a low, low point of their lives where they have to figure out another way, they have to go inside themselves and say, damn, what am I doing wrong? Who am I being that's wrong? Mm-hmm. Oftentimes, that's not late till later on, like mid-30s, early 40s of their lives. Gotcha, gotcha. And with the two independent um, conversations, mm-hmm. I guess it leads me back to, so... What is the measure of hmm. just taking care of business versus too independent? What are the measures versus yeah, taking care yeah. of What's the line? The, what's the line? Does a man draw where, you know what, she's, I know she's just taking care of business versus she's too independent. So my cohort I was speaking to, one of the things he said is a woman being able to relinquish responsibility. Mm-hmm. And when she's unwilling to relinquish that responsibility, that's bleeding over into the two independent. So my response was, oftentimes, in my frame of reference, mm-hmm. men want you to relinquish certain responsibilities, but they haven't demonstrated themselves to mm-hmm. be um, mm, capable, suitable. capable, capable mm-hmm. of taking on that responsibility. I don't trust your judgment. Mm-hmm. You haven't demonstrated to me that you're able to perform at this level or higher. So I'm not ready to relinquish that responsibility. I think some guys come with the mindset that just by virtue of me being the man, I should yep. be the leader. I should be, you know, you should listen to me. You should follow me. And this is the thing. No, buddy. No. I happened to have a conversation with someone last night and had to explain that I think almost any woman can be submissive to the right man. Mm-hmm. But why? The thing is, is that he's going to be Not his virtue of him being a man. So that's why I said to the right. To the right man. man. And I think a lot of men don't understand that. They think, I'm the man. You're supposed to fall in place. Get in line. Get in line. But and and hold on, but hold on. I gotta slow you later. Because that's the shit that... Yes, yes sir. Go ahead. I'm Why is it always, oftentimes, that the woman gotta be submissive to the man? Why can't it just be? Why can't it be just look? We gonna work together. We gonna figure out what's best for our relationship. Because sometimes some situations may cause him to be more submissive. In and a sometimes relationship, he might take it. Sometimes in, he might take you're it. You're right. But in a relationship, no matter what the relationship is, mm-hmm. overall, somebody's more dominant than the other. Okay. Because you, you uh, I'm, I'm going to even say, even in a, on a, in a, in a business structure, uh-huh. everybody's not the boss. You right. got your regular workers, you got uh, maybe a frontline manager, and then they go up and up and up. So everybody can't be the chief. We, we Even in a business, everybody can't wear the hat of being the decision maker all the time. So in a relationship, usually I agree with it being tandem where you're submissive, dominating, whatever. Those roles are interchangeable depending on the the circumstance. Because here it is, ideally, I think, I consider myself to be a person who can figure things out. In a relationship, um, if the roof needed to be fixed, right? Mm -hmm. 
I would not expect for my counterpart to look at me to figure out how the roof is gonna get fixed. Now, I could possibly be able to do that if I was without mates. Mm -hmm. But if that's something that you're better in, because whether you have the contacts, um, you know what needs to happen to the roof, I, I, I'm gonna fall back on that. I don't need you coming to me. We don't need to have a talk at the table to find out how the roof is gonna get fixed. Handle that. And, and that that was a part of an extended conversation too. Same conversation about being too independent as far as when something needs to be done, I shouldn't have to ask you. If water is falling on your head, I shouldn't have to say, hey honey, can you when are you gonna get that fixed? Cancel it. Fix. And and going back to too independent, one of the things All that, that um, he said All was that oftentimes women who are too independent, we don't wait for a man to do. So they know it needs to be done, but they have to operate on their own time. But we want it done now. And the roof that caved in, though. So because we want it done now, and in his head, he's like, I'm going to take care of that next week. He has communicated. He but has not. He, he has not. But That's the problem. Head, he he hasn't communicated, communicated it. Two days later, we already called the roofer. Because you know what? Because he hasn't you communicated it. If you're not going to get it done, I, I'll take care of myself. Because right. you're moving too slow. Right. So, Domingo's room, say something. I was going to say this. One, let's not let perfection get in the way of progression. All those things you just mentioned are things that can be adjusted while in a relationship. Because we operate differently within our different realms of relationships. Some people want the man to be a fixer. But some got into where they hire somebody to come in and fix it themselves instead of them fixing it. Mm -hmm. So... That shit, is, that shit is, is small. That shit is minuscule in the grand scheme of things. That they, The main thing, the issue I wanted to touch on was that about the, the submissiveness, about the leadership roles. Mm -hmm. Even if there's a head of a company. But guess what? At the end of the day, you aren't a company. You are a human <laughs> being. Y'all operate financially together, make business decisions together, but you both are human beings. He might be more business savvy than you. Or you might be more than him. So it's a relationship. It's a relationship. It's not. We have to take off this this hierarchy of somebody has to be on top, and then therefore someone has to follow under that. No, just be because what you're doing again, you keep creating those constraints of what a person is supposed to be. So, but if a man is at the top of the relationship, he has to be the leader. Well, here's what's going to happen. That man, oftentimes, he's going to make decisions that are going to what he's going to make decisions that go against what he feels and. And how he, he wants to exist because he also he always wants to retain the appearance of being a leader. Because he's gonna have weak moments and he's not gonna wanna open the fuck up because he don't want you to think that he's not a leader anymore. Or he's not capable of leading his family. But if it, if you didn't have that hierarchy in the first place, this just wouldn't be an issue. You two would just be able to exist and act on your strengths. He acts on his, you act on yours, and y'all work on everything else in between. So that's what I mean. Like, we have to stop putting, I wish we would really stop putting labels on each other and then labels within our relationships and just exist within them. Have your own rules of how you operate and engage. But we have to stop imposing on this is what you're supposed to be based upon this less label. Because too many of us try to exist and be things that are outside of that label. And that causes so much friction. And so um, that's what I want to say. And then also, here's another thing. I always say that the woman is quote unquote God, right? I say that the woman is number one in our lives. Why do I say that? Because women have the women <laughs> women have the genetic fortitude that all shit goes to hell. And uh, women were being attacked. The abilities were being attacked. The first ones who are going to step up and defend off the bullets are going to be the men. Because, why? Because genetically, we're more prone for war than women are. Women are prone for their social emotional ability. They have their limbic system is more expansive than the man. My what system? Limbic system. Your What's limbic, that? Your limbic system is. What's is that? Ba <laughs> I always say that's more. That's, uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't talk like that. <laughs> we don't talk like that. Yo. No. So the limbic system is basically it's how your your the new the neurons in your brain connects to your emotions. 
it creates your ability of how you feel and how you are emotionally connected in tune with yourself and others around you. Women have a greater connectivity of their limbic system than men, meaning they have more connections going on in their limbic system. Up next to the uh, Abdu, uh, Abdu, Gada, Abdu Gada. Ab. Ab, yeah, I can't mm-hmm. keep Abdullah, Ab- Ab- Gada. Yeah, whatever, okay. <laughs> that part of the brain. That part of the brain, yeah. Uh, that part of the brain all controls uh, how you deal with emotions. Women mm-hmm. have stronger connections than men. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, women are better at, at rearing children than men are. From an emotional standpoint. From an emotional standpoint. Because it's physiolog- physiologically wired that way. Exactly. I went exactly. to college, you know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah, Chris, we just want to tell them that we get a All right. So, so men, men, women, we just, outside of those norms, mm-hmm. like we, we want to protect, but there's still, there's no one role better than the other. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. We're more useful in one round, uh-huh. we're more useful in another round. Absolutely. But that doesn't even also mean that you're going, you're only useful there. You can be in each one other round too. Absolutely. Because you're a fucking human being. Right. right. 80, 80, 88% of us are alive gen- genetically. It, it's crazy because women, I, women, you know, you hear often hear the notion that women are mature faster than men. Mm-hmm. Well, men are born with the XY chromosome and women are born with the 2X. X chromosome. The X chromosome has more information in it, genetic information in it, than the fucking Y chromosome. So you saying um, women's just smarter than that? Yes. Like okay. genetically, you, you are, you are, you're better wired and created than we are. Gen- we're, that's why we're created more for warlike. We're created to be a little bit more dumb because we're created to be more warlike. I got you. I got you. All right. So, so getting back to some of these misconceptions, yeah. um, we're going to run through some of them. Let's do it. Um, again, the question was, what are some of the misconceptions society has about single black women over the age of 30? They're angry. They must be crazy. They don't have real careers. Something is wrong with them. They're too picky. They're too hard to get along with. They hate men. They're damaged. They don't want a man. They're in, too independent, bitter, unhappy. They have attitudes. They're stuck up. Used goods. Um, misconceptions. They get state assistance. Uh, I have one that says that they are lonely and horny. Ooh. They have multiple kids, and I think we mentioned um, again about being uneducated. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I don't like this one, but they're mad at the world. Damn, 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 damn. damn. So, what the question was posed because even if any of these statements are true, All right. there is a story or a reason why. They exist. They exist. Absolutely. So, society for a whole, Mm -hmm. from a negative um, perception, has these... And most of these questions, um, these answers, I'm going to say, honestly, came from people who were African-American. Let's let's just be honest with that. So, um... (laughs) So, society's looking at women over the age of 30... Mm -hmm. With some harsh, um, some harsh, uh, harshly. Mm-hmm. So, but but there's there's a consistent of being angry, mm-hmm. being miserable. Would we say that if the question was posed about a single white woman mm-hmm. over the age of thirty, mm-hmm. would the answer still be the same? Mm-hmm. Yes or no? No. It so why why does society view black women so negatively? I think society views black, black people, people right. negatively. Right. No, no, you because know. I still don't know if the question would have been answered or asked black man over the age of thirty. Would, say would they say ang- would would angry? Yeah, would would they have consistent they with would, the word angry? They would use us as Uneducated? Like, they would use us like maybe uh they they probably say brolic or probably mm-hmm. aggressive. Mm-hmm. Aggressive. Yeah, you know, they would say, you know, uh, thirty 
this other probably get high, probably some rapper or something. Like we have our stereotypes too that are that are negative. But here's here's the bigger point I want to get at. The bigger point that I want to get at is that we all, as a society, we emphasize the negative. Why? Because we we here we are talking about an issue that's negative. Why? Because it's, it's an issue that's going to garner attention, and it's a serious issue in our community. Mm-hmm. Instead of sitting here emphasizing on all the great things that have mm-hmm. that happen, because we have good things that happen in abundance. Mm-hmm. We go outside every day and get in our cars and go to work safely, without a car accident, without getting shot, stabbed, any of those things. But what makes the news? Somebody getting shot, stabbed, car accident. So, you know, anything that's out, because those things are outside the norm. The norm is these stereotypes that you have. Right. Outside the, sorry, excuse me. Outside the norm is these stereotypes you have. Uh, so, they, they do exist. There are black women out there who are, who are upset, who have been, who have kids, blah, 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 blah. Yes, that is true. There are some out there. But to emphasize that as being the sum of a 30-year-old black woman, single woman, black woman experience, that's just ignorance. And that's up. That tells me that that tells me is that you you still have yet to confront something traumatic about your own past because if you're able to recall you're, you're being requested to give information on something today and the advice or contribution you have to this conversation is a negative portrayal tells you you have a negative experience mm-hmm. which tells you you haven't confronted that experience and that ain't fair to confront your past but uh, so, yeah, I, I, that's what I'm, I'm at with it. With any, anyone who has and believes those things, it's not saying it's not true. Right. But it's saying it's not true in its totality. Right. It's not true in its context. So I, I think, even, again, even if anyone wants to believe, because some of these are true. Let's, let's not even yeah, front. Some yeah, of them are true. Yeah, shut up, shut up. <laughs> but there's a story behind each incident why a woman can be perceived as being angry or why she may be angry. Yeah. Um, there's a story to why, because I don't think that most people in general, specifically African Americans, specifically women, want to be 30 years old and be uneducated. Circumstances probably led her down that path. Or being a, for lack of better words, product of her environment. Mm-hmm. Created her to be that type of person. Mm-hmm. Um, to be mad at all men. Uh, I don't know. I personally don't know any single woman mm-hmm. that hates men. I don't know any. I'm going to tell you the truth. What? No, no, no. Let, 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 let me finish. Poor, you know, let me finish. Let me finish. I personally don't know any black woman, single woman, exactly. that hates men. I know black women who hate some men. I do not know black women who hate men. I do. I don't. Well, yeah. yeah. You I, know what I mean? I, I, no, I do. As a oh, matter of fact, um, I encountered a, a young woman who said it like she said it. Mm-hmm. I hate men. And, and she hates men be, probably because of uh, a uh, circumstance. Uh, yeah. But she hates yes. So, but I think all of it comes from a circumstance. All of it does come from a so, so she hates men. Please elaborate on this. Even what you know behind it. She hates men, meaning she hates the way they look. She hates what they... She hates men, she said. Is she gay? Yes. That doesn't count. It don't count. No, it doesn't. Well, she didn't bring that. Into, well, there was no, no, she talks about I know. no, no, no. Let me say this. Well, what are the things? Hold on, hold on. Real talk with Pasha B. Supports the LGBTQ <laughs> community. So that's not the <laughs> issue. My issue. What I'm saying is. You don't know heterosexual. I don't know a heterosexual black, a heterosexual single woman, no matter what race they are. If me. That hate men. I don't know any. I, I know some, and they act on. They hate men so much that they act in a way to where they don't do anything but want to take from them. Okay. So, but, but another thing that she brought up was even when you look at the state of the world, mm-hmm. talking about the wars and just mm-hmm. all of the crime that you hear about. A lot of the women in the lit movement, to be honest mm-hmm. with you, hate men. They don't put how often, how many times, how often do you hear a lot of women who are pro-lib groups that are saying, you know what? I don't know them. 
That's why I said I know. I'm saying from okay, my all right. my life. First off, we are gonna get past this patch, right? Uh-huh. We gonna get past this some more friends. Right? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, and I think sometimes she ain't not here. No, not necessarily verbalized, but we right. get the action. actions. Absolutely. Well, may you're right, but I think it also like when I say for me, I'm, I don't want to associate myself with people who hate men. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, that's not even gonna be a connection of somebody because you're sitting around here. Dogging out men, I don't want to be around you. Pasha loves men. Okay, I love the men, especially the black ones. Okay, so <laughs> so no, I, I, but I, I think that's that's a strong misconception about hating men. I, I do believe that there are some women out there who do. It's circumstantial. If they were to deep digger, deep dig deeper, excuse me, into what the reason was, I don't think. They would. The end result would be that they hate men. They hate certain kind of men, or that man, or the one who raped them, or the one who did them wrong. Not every man. But if, you, if, you deal, if you deal with a woman who's a gold digger, her mission in life is to get rich off men and come up off men. Mm-hmm. That is an acting. That's an action of you hate men. You just see men as an object. You see men as a tool. You want to take from them. I, I, I think the underlying, again, could be psychological where somebody All did it something. All of it is psychological. You're only, when you act out in pain, it's only because you know what pain feels like. You're not going to act out of hurt because you don't know what hurt feels like. You've been hurt before. Yeah, because hurt people hurt people. Shit. Mm-hmm. You saying hurt people don't hurt people? You just said you're acting. Because you can be hurt and still heal people. Do you believe that? Do you believe heal people hurt people? Hell yeah. Just like if people say, if you love me, you would hurt me. Fuck out of here. My mom used to whoop my ass all the time. That's not hurt. Girl, that's that's, 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 what, that's what we call a pow pow. That's not like a mom be whooping what we call a pow pow. But yeah, like I, I think that all that men, women out there who hate men, yes, I think there are women out there who hate men. Is and it, conversely, there are men, men out there who oh, hate shit, yeah. men. Shit, yeah. I not know plenty. I can call them out by name. Yeah. The sad part is that a lot of them be older men. But see, my thing is if you hate, if you hate and, the, and what are you saying by hate? What you right, that's, that, hate? Uh, that, that's what I want, the definition of hate. Because if you hate someone, you don't mess with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't hate. You You want to bring harm to them. How about that? You want to bring harm to them. You want to bring them down. Yep. You want to okay. bring see, them down. See, you're, and you're right. So, when I hear when I, for hate, for me... Mm-hmm. Hate is not being. Um, I feel like a pastor when I'm old. You do. You look like one. You got that thumb action right there too. You got mm-hmm. that big old. Oh, oh, oh! No, I'm, just, oh. I, I'm, I'm very. <laughs> very I'm sorry, but with hate, like for me, if I hate somebody, I don't mess with them at all. Like hate for me is not. I'm going to try to hurt somebody. If I hate, that's why I don't hate anybody. I don't mess with you. Like, I, I, if I hate you, and I don't hate, but if I don't like you, I'm cutting you out. I'm not dealing with you. That's what I see, deem as hate. Okay. But I do understand society and most people, because hurt people hurt people. Really so, ha- hurt people who hate are wanting to do something negative, whether it be hurt, um, talk bad about keep someone down or, or whatever. And and for me, I don't process hate that way. I process okay. hate as I just don't want to be bothered with you. Okay. Well, I just want to let you know that there's people who hate you. <laughs> and they, yes. they not only not saying things to you, but they try to do things to make your life detrimental. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And and I can, I can receive that 100%. So, when that dude that you put in the friend zone... Oh my god, we're going back to that. You're gonna stop paying your phone bill. You know what was funny? Like, I, 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 you know, when I put people in the friend zone, they tend to not want to stay in the friend zone. So, so I I cut them off. You got to. I do. Like, my tolerance is very, very low. Their tolerance is ran out. That's exactly right. No. I literally had, no, I literally, you ain't gonna dog me out like that. I literally have had to tell a dude. Putting all this down there work. Now he about to get the boot straight out of the back. He can't get no, no severance letter. No. 
<laughs> There's no separate attack in the <laughs> No. Like, if you can't stay in the friend zone, then that means that Damn. to a degree you're being intrusive into my life. Oh, not and intrusive, I, but you wasn't intrusive at 2 o'clock in the morning would you need to do a goddamn sink face. Y'all talking about laying pipe? <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, hey, he fucking, he was complacent. He was staying in his place to be fucking. Oh. Yeah, oh, yeah. He, he, he was doing some pussy. He don't stay in his place. <laughs> he don't mind being a friend so then. All right. Now, if he find out you're a good woman, then he doesn't mess with Now he doesn't mess with you. Like, if he find out you're just close to your man, like, you do nice shit, like, just rub on your man, nothing, shit, like, y'all want to do. He don't like, you know, like, you do some shit. I'm Only if he's in the right place, because you can in the right meaning in his life, because you can rub on a man that's juggle balls, yeah. all tea bag, all that stuff, and it, it it's not enough for some people. No, that's true. I mean, a woman, you know, yeah, I get that, but you know, I'm talking, I'm talking about for a man who got his life straight. Okay. So we talking about okay. Yeah, he a friend again. Friend, you ain't got this uh, game and ain't shit nigga. Uh, in the friend zone. Yeah, yeah you're right. Zone. You're right. Because yeah. usually the friend zone consists of people who. Good yeah. 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 Who yeah. Come yeah. to your crib and say, "Oh, let me check the mailbox for you," because you know. I you know. are absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. That's true. So what? See, I've been known for a minute, so I'm gonna put y'all back on the map. So what? Stupid. So what's our takeaway? Our takeaway is that unconditional. Remember, we're talking about the misconceptions. You ain't learned this whole time. See, that's what I'm saying. No, 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 no. I mean, as far as understanding why that stereotype exists, I'm, no, I, 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 I. I, I so what you gonna do the next time you approach you dealing with a man and, he, and he's, he gets uh, he gets to start feeling insecure about your his ability to contribute to your financial situation? So, because each misconception has a story. Mm-hmm. I know. To be honest, you so, I, and, I, and I've dealt with it. So, and, and, I see. I am handy. I'm <laughs> and I've dealt with it before, and. The only thing I can do is basically express to you that that's not the only role that you can have. In addition, is you can never have too much in the pot, you know? So we can build a... Oh, okay, because I, I, I was going some, some other place, but I hear what oh, you're saying. Yeah, so regardless of what I have, whatever you bring to the table, that's just more for everybody involved. Also, I think you made a very good point about the companionship. Mm-hmm. I think women truly, truly, truly value companionship um, more so than men value companionship. Maybe mm-hmm. that's a stereotype, but I do believe women value companionship. Is that com- the misconception of the black man? Yeah. Oh, that's a good-ass question. I think men do underestimate companionship. So, even... Because you talk to be whores. You talk that yeah, you're a you, great you thought, man. You thought it's okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You thought that it's okay. Yeah. So, even coming from the standpoint of just being a companion and building upon that um, yeah I, I think that's something that I typically share Okay. because again it, it's come up before in the past it's like trying to it, it is aggravating trying to talk a guy through um, you're more valuable than what you think, think you, you are. Bring, yeah, then mm-hmm. what you think you can bring to the table. I'm not looking for this. So I'm not looking for a house. I already have one. I have that. So, so cool it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So if I'm with you and spending time with you, why do you think I'm doing that? Right, right. Yeah. To me, go. Yeah. You know, no, because you ain't communicating. You see, that's what you're talking about. Then I think we just had the first session. No, but see, you is, you you is holding that mic like it's you are a reverend. Listen. It's not a yes <laughs> and I have, If I have a house, that yeah. means I'm not looking for that from you. No, that doesn't so mean. So at, at some point, you're thinking, okay. And I, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that because, like, and I agree with what Demigos is saying. Just because you have a house doesn't mean that you're not looking for a house because I could be looking for a bigger house. And if you are not right. able to, to right, then you... So going back to the conversation, so the conversation is, can we get a bigger house? Not can you get it for me? And I, I, I know this one over here. 
right now, honey, them, I, I understand, Pastor, but it's about the, the unit. We're trying to create a family unit or a yeah. partnership or what have you. Yeah. Then what right. can we get a bigger house? You're absolutely yeah. right. And me keep my money to myself. <laughs> D'Amico, what's your takeaway? If you have one. Well, my takeaway is this. It's going to come to some point in time where our children are going to grow up. Look at the reference. And they're going to live in all the mistakes. Well, well. Mm -hmm. Because we have decided not to put in the work required to build the bridges of even in our romantic relationship. Mm -hmm. That is your uh, uh, affirmation (laughs) day. Um, no, so, yeah, so I, I really, I, I met a 60-year-old man who's successful. Mm-hmm. He's been on his wife since high school. Mm-hmm. You know, he's school. And he told me, he said, young man, I apologize because we didn't do all that we were supposed to do. So y'all are left behind to clean up our mess mm-hmm. and still live your life. Mm-hmm. I don't ever want to have to walk up on a young man and share those exact same words because I didn't do all I could and work that I we needed to be doing for them to have a better future. Mm-hmm. And this is always how I when, I, when I see a troubled child, especially a young teenage man, and the mothers come to me, oftentimes at night, and they say, he, he's not doing this, he's not doing this, he's not doing this. I always ask, well, what kind of life are you leading? Because at the end of the day, our children hear what you tell them, but they believe what they see. Mm-hmm. So if they see you being mediocre as a motherfucker partying your ass off, talking shit about people, so on and so forth, you think the motherfucker's gonna go to school with an upstanding ass attitude? Mm-hmm. Hell no. On top of them living in poverty and struggling with whatever other factors that they going on and the challenges they got going on in their lives. So the biggest takeaway for me is that I'm glad we're having these conversations like this and creating dialogue. Now we got to get to a point of creating progressive dialogue getting towards solutions, getting to tr- true matters of it. Because at this point, I believe we're, all, we're beyond expressing ourselves. Now we gotta help them. That's it. my take away. Coach it. Nico, be good, be great. Com. Drop this mic. Plug. <laughs> and, and I'm gonna follow right behind the past stuff <laughs> and say, um, my takeaway from this is that Again, even though some of the comments, answers may have validity, that there's a story behind each one. So maybe um, try to understand the story and then you can probably understand uh, the black woman. Okay. Mm. All right. So Real Talk with Passion B supports arts and those that create it. So, brother. We're going to have open mic for D'Amico, but um, for all things ordinary, go visit ordinarypeoplemedia.com. Until next time, peace.